Welcome to Sweden Care's Q2 report. It's me, Håkan Lagerberg, and uh, Jenny Grafflin, our CFO. Okay, now we'll start to present the Q2 report. Uh, strong sales with preparations for period of higher growth. Um, we had a sales record uh, for the for the company, and uh, that was as expected since we added two important pieces to our puzzle in January this year uh, and February, Inovet and NatureVet. Uh, we had solid demand despite world situation. Uh, what we can say is that uh, uh, this has proven the, the, the fact that we are also presenting on, on special uh, market insights webpage is that the demand in the pet sector is strong and stable, even though uh, insecurities all, all over the world. Uh, we had organic growth of 4% uh, below our yearly target of 20%, but we have communicated that previously because we had the toughest comps ever, 45% last year. And also uh, what we have seen uh, is that the inventory trimming of the larger retail and veterinarian companies uh, have, have uh, taken effect for us in, in the quarter. However, we know that the sales out of the door uh, is strong with the, the double digit growth for all of our products. And uh, we've also seen it with our online sales that have been really strong. So the end consumers are... Um, Keep keeping on buying our products uh, and uh, if, uh, more than in line with our expected organic growth. And uh, we've also communicated that second half this year will be a lot stronger due to two major projects that, that we will describe later on. Um, we have been focusing this quarter also a lot on business development, integration of our uh, all of our group companies, and uh, continue to move forward from external to in, uh, internal manufacturing. As you've seen, uh, we have increased our, our gross margin, and um, and that is partly due to these these trans transfers from external to, to internal manufacturing. We have also presented some. Uh, interesting market insights on our webpage. And I mentioned that in my, uh, my words in the report that we feel that Sweden Care is excellently positioned to take part of the, the ongoing uh, the increases in, in this market. Uh, looking at, at our net sales, 471 million Swedish kroners, an increase with 194%. Uh, our operative, uh, uh, EBITDA margin uh, was 25.2, stronger than last quarter, and I uh, expect this to to keep on getting stronger uh, the year, uh, the quarters to come. Um, and then looking at some key performance indicators. Yes, as Hogan mentioned, we had net revenues for the quarter of 470, which is the highest uh, so far. Yeah, this is compared to 160 million last year, so 194% increase. The gross margin at 56.1% was the best margin we have had since the Q3 of 2020. It is partly driven by the price increases that we have pushed to our customers, uh, but also with the acquisitions of NatureVet and InnoVet has a higher margin. Uh, we also had a change in, um, in the... Uh, purchase price allocation of NatureVet, which resulted in a higher gross margin this quarter and also a revised gross margin for last quarter, where we were able to improve the gross margin of 21 million for Q1. You can see that in the appendix in the report. This is due to the fact that we do not have to reevaluate the inventory and do not have to depreciate that as uh, in the coming quarters. Uh, operational EBITDA margin of 119 million, an increase of 146 percent compared to last year, where we had 48 million, a margin of 25.2 percent. Cash uh, is 235 million uh, when we closed the quarter. It's been impacted partly by um, we did a small investment in a Czech uh, company, a minority share. Uh, we have also paid the dividend of 31 million um, during the quarter. 
And after the end of the quarter, we have also paid the earnout of $27.5 million um, in the beginning of July for NatureVet. So our operating cash flow is 15.8 uh, million. Uh, we have a strong uh, solvency of 71.4%. Our net debt is uh, below three, is 2.76 for the quarter. Uh, one other thing that has Im uh, impacted the results for the quarter is the tax and the net income. We uh, have a positive effect of 33 million due to a tax valuation contribution for the quarter. And we have also made a change in the company structure in the beginning of the year uh, in the US where we increased the possibilities to use tax depreciation now that exists in the group, uh, which will have a positive effect for uh, several years to come. Sales per region and the things that are impacting the sales per region is heavily the um, acquisitions that has been uh, done. So you can see that the North America is the region that is uh, the largest and is growing. It's at 78% compared to 62% last year. We have also had uh, Sweden Care UK had their second best quarter ever. And we also had acquisitions in the UK and rest of Europe, which has impacted. But overall, uh, all we have growth in all our markets. And uh, as I mentioned in the report, we are also selling now to over 60 countries in the world. Sales per product. Uh, similar thing here. We have growth in all our product groups. Again, uh, the product groups that are heavily impacted by the acquisitions are nutraceuticals which is now uh, the largest one at 50% uh, of our revenue. And topicals and dermatology is also uh, impacted due to the fact that we have um, uh, new companies in this uh, product group. And just to mention, Proden Plakoff had a growth of 16% this quarter. It's now 10% of the total revenues. And during the quarter, we also had the VOHC seal on our dental bones after two successful studies that have been performed. Sales per brand, um, it's uh, uh, pretty evenly uh, divided, except for NatureVet, our um, is biggest brand and, and uh, continues to grow. Uh, Innovate came in with 8%, and then we have um, PetMD and Proden Plakoff, fa fairly similar, and then uh, RX Vitamins at 7%, and NutraVet at 3%. And then we have lots of other smaller brands within our group, but been, been strong. Strong sales for, for all brands uh, over the quarter to quarter. Looking at the different regions, uh, North America grew by 271% and, um, and uh, there's been lots of activities in, in uh, North America as I described previously. Uh, we now have um, combined the, the uh, forces for the veterinarian sales in the U.S. So we have a, a new, new strategy, a more customer-centric team uh, selling in, uh, in more, more than one brand. And uh, we have had several, uh, several successful seminars and, and customer meetings going forward. Lots of group uh, projects for optimization, production and other services and price negotiations for group, not individual companies. So that's a big uh, advantage for us now when, when talking to suppliers that we have the whole Sweden Care group as a buyer. So that, that work has just started, but there are uh, many opportunities to get uh, <clears throat> better prices for, for, from the different suppliers. Also, when uh, offering private label and contract manufacturing contracts. Um, we are also in, in a unique position having uh, market leading soft shoe uh, production, having, um, having uh, the, the leading dermatology uh, producer in the US. So, so there, there are uh, many opportunities going forward. PetMD had a fantastic growth in the quarter over 30% and all of our online sales has been really strong. And that's uh, what gives us comfort going forward is that we are more in charge of our own sales and, and can focus on that um, compared to the bigger retailers and veterinary clinics that I said was trimming in their, their inventory. But however, um, the, we, we do see a see a strong pickup end of this quarter. June was, was our best, uh, best month ever, and uh, it's been strong going into July as well. So, so we do think that the, these um, inventory trimmings, they, they, 
they uh, were, were uh, implemented all over the, the, the bigger companies, but they have seen that the demand from the end consumer is strong and, and uh, continues to grow. So, so, um, so we, we see, see a, a, an improved um, ordering um, for all of our group companies. Uh, NatureVet, 7% uh, growth in the quarter uh, and 20% in June. And going forward, be having, having a strong July as well, as I said, the, the, it's partly impacted by our new, uh, new, new product line called Evolutions, targeting millennials uh, in the US, being distributed out to, to uh, major retailers now and will be launched online uh, in a month, uh, approximately. Uh, we have launched a couple of new smaller brands uh, capturing openings in the market where we see uh, where we see that the competition isn't too too tough then then we we see that with our capabilities we can be fast moving and and uh, enter the market with with different brands targeting a specific group or a specific uh, product range uh, new software lines, both in NatureVet and Vetio completed. Uh, uh, as I mentioned in the report, these have been, been major projects, uh, have, uh, major investments for us and uh, taken up a lot of time. So, so it's been a fantastic job from both organizations finishing this. So, so they, um, they, they, are, they have just been, been finished and we are ramping up uh, production as we speak. Uh, we are launching a new uh, Proton Plaque Off uh, soft shoe line manufactured at NatureVet in Q3. So that will be exciting. We will, we will launch it at SuperSU in August in Las Vegas. Uh, we also got a patent granted for water and starch free soft shoe uh, manufacturing for Betio North for our pharmaceutical products. And uh, um, th this is a, a um, a great great achievement because it's been a long process and uh, now we got got notice both from europe and us for, for these patent applications so so uh, we will uh, be be pushing that when when discussing with the um, pharma customers of ours team and skill uh, build up in both video south and north for the upcoming manufacturing both video south and video north are entering a, a new type of manufacturing um, um, uh, manufacturing uh, of, of soft juice that we haven't done before. So, so it's been important that we have the right teams in place. Going forward to uh, Europe, uh, a growth of 78%. Um, solid quarter in most markets. Greece a bit more affected by external factors as, as economy, uh, but also pick up there in June. Uh, in France, we have uh, taken back our distribution for pet retail, uh, adding new cus direct customers. So we did that end of Q1. And so Q2 has been, been hectic for, for our French organization, um, setting up new customers uh, that, that we will start deliver uh, products. Uh, we have delivered some in Q2, but the primarily second half year. Innovet, our new Italian uh, colleagues, uh, strong profitability and grew stronger than the market. Mar the market as such in, in Italy was, was not so strong, uh, basically flat when it comes to animal health products, but, uh, but Innovet grew by, by 8% uh, and, um, and uh, have just launched a couple of new products and see, see a strong comeback in the market. Uh, Ireland, there, there we installed a new production line, folk, uh, basically ordered by our, our group company, Nutrivet. So it's a completely new, new product that uh, uh, is being launched now in Q3, and we will use that production line also for other brands in our group. Uh, also added a new uh, contract manufacturing client with the global veterinary companies. So, so uh, that is to show that we are active also in the contract manufacturing business. Uh, very strong sales for Sweden Care UK uh, had had a a, a weaker Q2 uh, in in 21 than others, so the comps wasn't that strong for 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 Sweden Care UK. But however, a really good uh, good quarter, one of their best ever, and uh, and very strong sales for Proton Plakov uh, specifically online. Uh, Nutravet continued to grow our, our, our um, vet, uh, vet focused uh, brand in the UK, uh, added many new clinics, uh, but lower sales by, by approximately 
uh, by approximately 6 million Swedish kroners, but that's due to their, their biggest customer having a change in the pattern of ordering. So for full year, uh, th there will be growth in that, uh, for that customer as well. And, and, uh, and um, also international sales grew, grew for, for Nutravet, uh, South Korea being a very important and strong market for them, and also adding a new country, Indonesia. Several new product launches in basically all of our group companies. Looking at the rest of the world, um, that, that's been, been uh, a bit tougher over the COVID years. Uh, uh, it's great to see that we're back being able to, to travel at least to, to most parts of the world, not really in Asia fully, but still uh, had a fantastic um, uh, expo at Interzoo, Germany the world's biggest uh, companion animal, animal uh, uh, expo that, that hasn't taken place for, for three years. So really strong interest. And, and um, we presented most of our group brands there. And uh, there are lots of follow-ups to be done right now. Uh, strong sales in most markets, except China, as we have mentioned. Uh, China was, was, is still weak due to all of the lock, lockdowns. But uh, hopefully it will, will um, start improving now after summer. Um, to mention some markets, Japan has been really strong, um, and there we had a really uh, successful launch of Proton Black Off Powder. Uh, it, it has been sold um, uh, exclusively in the veterinary sector up till now, but now we went to the pet retail sector also, and, and the, the, the sales has been, been uh, way above our, our expectations. Uh, and looking at the different brands that we do uh, export, the, the uh, main, main uh, brands that we export is Proton Pack Off, of course, NatureVet, NutraVet, and RX Vitamins. That RX Vitamins are really strong in the sales for Asia as well. Yeah, this, this uh, slide is just to show how the revenue and the adjusted EBITDA has grown for the last year per quarter. As you can see, it has an upgoing trend. Uh, and the next slide will show you the rolling four quarters. Of course, this is our reported numbers. So in the net revenue and EBITDA, it's only included, for example, four months of NatureVet and five months of InnoVet. So as the performance numbers is significantly higher, this will continue to increase as we are adding more quarters with the whole group. But at the moment, it's 1.3 million in uh, or billion in revenues and 319 in uh, operational EBITDA. Yes, and the priorities going forward in 2022 is really uh, use the, our group size for increasing margin and also um, also uh, working with uh, let's say larger uh, customers, focusing on bigger contracts with them. Uh, increased marketing and sales efforts, especially now when we have our production lines ready to, to be able to take on uh, new customers, because that, that has been an issue previously. Uh, brand and product development, um, lots of, lots of uh, let's say, work with um, rebranding and Pro and Plaque Office being, being launched this, this uh, second half year with a completely new design. We have just started on, on, in some markets um, with a sneak sneak launch, but uh, that will be be uh, presented all over our markets in in the second half year, and for some other uh, group companies also, we we are really focusing on targeted and cost efficient marketing campaigns, um, and and uh, th that has been very successful for us going forward. And all of the group companies that uh, are in Sweden Care ha has the same has had the same culture before joining Sweden Care. And, and that is one, one key issue why, why many of these uh, successful companies have wanted to join us, is that we are really co uh, cost-focused and agile and uh, are not, uh, not the, the, let's say, uh, the, the company that has accustomed to, to buying in lots of services. We, we like to do lots of things ourselves, and we have the, the skills and competences for that. Um, we are also adding, of course, uh, talent to our organization. We, we are uh, uh, growing at a fast pace and we, we do need to, to, um, to build up organization, but we do it uh, as, as always uh, very consciously and also, also when needed. 
looking forward at the the uh, M&A opportunities. Uh, there has been, uh, of course, a bit less activity in Q2 if you compare to Q1 and, and uh, last year Q4, and not only for us, but also for, for the market as such. Uh, we do see there are, are lots of opportunities going forward, forward as well. So, so, um, but this quarter and, and going forward, we have focused on integration and really um, getting these new, new, um, new, new companies that have joined us to 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 really uh, work well within the group. And that has also been over my expectations uh, when it comes to both NatureVet and uh, Innovet. But we have we have lots of contact out in the market and and many many uh, companies contacting us. So so going forward, I expect us to to be active. But uh, but uh, let's see. We will come back to that. Some questions. That's um, that's the presentation. We have received a couple of questions. I will put on the camera here as well. Uh, we have received a couple of questions uh, before the presentation, so uh, let's go through them. So Håkan, related to the new deals that was indicated to be under negotiation, how are they progressing and how is the market likely to be proactively informed about deal value over the contract period? Yeah, that, that's different in, in, in for the different, uh, let's say, negotiations that we have. Some will be communicated uh, with a press release and some will perhaps only be mentioned as a increase in sales for, 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 for uh, some of our group companies. But they are progressing really well. And, uh, and um, over this, this uh, coming half year, um, I will be able to com communicate a couple of them at least. Great. Uh, are you holding the time plan for the Q3 production ramp up at mainly Vettio, but also at NatureVet? Uh, yes, we are. Q3 is definitely uh, uh, going to be, uh, or there, there has already been live, live a small project in, in uh, Vettio South. And uh, when it comes to Vettio North, uh, we have started th this month and... and uh, and uh, for NatureVet, it's actually um, the, the, the has started uh, probably around uh, around today or, or at least uh, next week. We will have the, the new line up and running, uh, but of course, not going at 100 percent capacity. Uh, but uh, absolutely, they, they, they are all uh, all in production this quarter. Very good. Uh, next question. Uh, what is the result of the completed purchase price allocation and what's behind the adjustments for Q1? Uh, well, in the Q1, we did a preliminary purchase price allocation, which was now completed during this quarter. And uh, the big impact was on uh, inventory due to the fact that we have a fair market value on the ingoing balance. We do not have to do, we do not have to depreciate uh, the inventory, which then had a positive effect on the Q1, which we restated uh, of 22 million. And then it's going to have a less uh, depreciation impact on the gross margin going forward. So positive impact for us. That's the questions we have received. Uh, let's finish. And uh, in about five minutes, we will come back and we will do a live chat on any questions that comes in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.